Hey, I'm Doug from Convology. In this video, we're going to walk through a complete setup of Amazon SES so that you can use it to send emails from your WordPress website. First, you're going to need an AWS account. You can Google uh, Amazon AWS or Amazon SES. Uh, and if you go to aws.amazon.com, uh, this is what you'll see, or this is slash SES. Regardless, in the upper right-hand corner, click create an AWS account. Now you'll want to put an email address for the root user, and then you can put in your email address and the account name that you want to have, and then add an email, verify it, and get set up. It's very standard account creation kind of stuff. Once you have your user made, you're going to want to click sign in and you're going to leave root user selected and you're going to enter your email, click next, enter your password and log in. Now, before we get started, one somewhat important thing to do is to select the region that you would like to associate your Amazon account with. In the upper right hand corner, you can see that I have Northern California selected. However, if you drop this down, Amazon has servers pretty much, well, almost everywhere. So you can choose a location nearest to you or nearest to your users. I think it just matters that you get somewhat close. I'm in the US and I'm in California. However, most all of my emails are sent from the East Coast from Virginia. So it technically doesn't matter too much which one you choose. For this, I've chosen Northern California. We're gonna tackle setting up our account credentials and our IAM user, or IAM user. In the search bar at the top, type in IAM and then look for IAM, which is right here and click on users. In the upper right hand corner, click add user. Give your user a username. This can be practically whatever you want. I think you can't use spaces or things like that, uh, but enter in a username and then check the box for access key, programmatic access. Then at the bottom, click next permissions. And then we want to click on attach existing policies directly and search for Amazon SES and check the box next to Amazon SES full access and click next for tags. We're going to click next review and then we're going to click create user. All right, now we have our access key ID and our secret access key. We're going to need both of these in order to connect Amazon SES with Fluent SMTP or any other tool in WordPress that we're trying to use to send emails through Amazon SES. Now, what happens if you lose that secret key or we moved too quickly and you forgot to copy it from that original screen? It's pretty easy to generate a brand new one and you haven't messed anything up. Go back to the search bar, search for IAM, hover over IAM and select users. Select the user that you created. And here in the security credentials tab, what you want to do is create a new access key because you'll note if you lose or forget your secret key, you cannot retrieve it. So we're going to create a new access key. And here you can see that we have a secret key that we can show. I recommend you copy the access key and copy the secret key somewhere that you can keep safe and remember for later. Okay, now it's time to set up some settings inside of Amazon SES. We're almost there. In the top search bar, search for SES and click on Amazon Simple Email Service. If you haven't figured it out, that's what SCS stands for. Now we need to create an identity. So click the orange Create Identity button. And I recommend you choose Domain. This means that you'll be able to send from any emails at your domain because you've verified that you are the owner of this domain. Alternatively, you could choose a single address, but we're going to proceed with Domain because I feel like it's the absolute best option for you to choose. Where it says Domain, you're going to enter your domain name. Now, if you would like to take one extra step towards making your emails even more deliverable and separating your marketing emails from your transactional emails, we have a step here to use a custom mail from domain. And let's read this real quick. Configuring a custom mail from domain for messages sent from this identity enables the mail from address to align with the from address. Domain alignment must be achieved in order to be DMARC compliant. Now, I'm not going to pretend I fully understand all the acronyms of DMARC, DKIM, SPF, and all that fancy stuff. However, I do know that a lot of experts who do know what they're talking about typically recommend that you set up different sending identities for your transactional emails and your marketing emails. That starts to go a little bit beyond the scope of this tutorial. However, if you do check this box, you can enter in here a subdomain. For example, I could do emails.convologydemo.com in which case Amazon would send the emails through that address. And all this requires is for you to set up a simple DNS entry inside of your domain DNS. 
you don't have to check this box. In fact, for a very long time, I was sending email from my WordPress website without using this. To get started, we're going to not check this box, and I'm going to show you how to come back and do that later if you decide that you want to do this. So for now, we can scroll down, and we're just going to click Create Identity. Now you can see here that our identity status is pending because we need to verify that we own the domain that we entered in. To do that, we're going to scroll down, and you're going to see that they've given us some domain keys for domain key identified mail or DKIM. In order to authenticate our domain, we're given three records here with a name and a value. These record types are C names. Now, depending on where your domain name is registered and where your DNS are pointing to, this next part may be slightly different. I'm going to show you what this looks like at Google domains, and it's very similar everywhere else. Conveniently, they've given us these little boxes here that we can click on that automatically copy the DNS record to our clipboard. So go ahead and copy the first one to your clipboard and proceed to your DNS. Your DNS setup might look something similar to this, where you have a host name, a type, a TTL, and then the data that we're going to put in. The type is pretty simple. They already told us it was a C name. So find C name. And as you can see in our dropdown here, it's a little long. So it's CNA dot dot dot. But when you click on it, it will say C name. For the host name, we're going to paste in what they gave us. For the TTL, we can leave this at 3600. Everywhere is a little bit different. Some allow you to change the TTL. Some allow you to set it as low as 500 or 600 or 300. But for what we're doing right now, we can leave this as the default. Now we need to go back to AWS and we need to copy the value to the right of the name that we copied previously. And notice that here in AWS, they call this the value, but at Google domains, they call this the data. Again, everywhere is just a little bit different. So for that, we just paste in the data and this record is complete. And then we can click save. Now, one note, I think that's important to mention, depending on your DNS, some of them here in our host name do not want us to append our domain name. So in this example, we have a bunch of uh, entries here uh, and it gets to the point where it's underscore domain key dot and then the domain that we're using. If you run into any issues where for some reason AWS is not authenticating your domain, what you may need to do is come in and delete your domain and delete that period so that it ends with just domain key. You can typically edit the entries at your DNS and then you would click save again. So you need to repeat this step here, creating your three C names and saving them with the data that AWS has provided you here. And once all of those are complete, depending on the TTL, the higher number, the longer it takes. And with some DNS, they just take up to 72 hours anyway. For the most part, I've noticed that within an hour or two, regardless of what I've put my TTL at, when I use something like Cloudflare or Google domains, within about an hour, this is authenticated. And you'll know if it's authenticated because here under the DKIM configuration, this will be a green check mark and it'll look like it has been authenticated. Now, remember we left the custom mail from domain empty previously. If you decide that you'd like to use one of those, you can come in here and click the edit button down at the bottom, use a custom mail from domain. You can check that and you can enter in a subdomain. So maybe we'll enter in emails. So it would be emails.convologydemo.com. Click save changes. And then if we scroll back down here, you can see that we have two more records we have to add. It's the same process as our C names, but the type will be MX for this record and text for this record. And again, depending on your DNS, they may or may not want you to append the dot domain name.com at the end. And to just try to cover our bases even more in this record here where you see the 10, so this is the MX record and it has a 10 and then feedback and all of this here, you may need to remove this 10 and the space after it and put that as the priority and then just copy everything else as the value or the data. Again, it's going to depend on your DNS. All right, we're making great progress. We're almost done. Next, we need to set up notifications. Notifications are how complaints, bounces, and delivery issues are handled. By default, the email feedback forwarding is enabled, which means that you're going to receive an email if there's a lot of bounce issues or complaints when you send an email. If you're using Fluent CRM, you have the ability to set up a feedback notification for bounce emails so that Fluent CRM knows if an email has bounced. 
let's go ahead and set that up right now. The way that I like to do this is in the top search bar, search for SNS for simple notification service and click into that. On the right hand side, we need to create a topic by giving it a name. This can be something like Fluent SMTP or the website that you have and then include some kind of identifier so that you know what it is. For us, maybe we'll do Convology Demo Bounces, something like that. I know you can't have spaces, you might be able to have underscores. Then we click next step. We leave standard as the option chosen and click create topic. Now we need to click this orange create a subscription button or you could click the one down here as well. And then for our protocol, we want to choose HTTPS. Now we need to get our endpoint. Our endpoint is given to us by Fluent CRM in this case. Inside of Fluent CRM, under settings, down at the bottom, you'll see SMTP email service settings. Select Amazon SES and then copy this link that they give you right here. Come back in and paste that in as your endpoint and then check the box for enabling raw message delivery. We don't need to do anything else here and then click create subscription. If your subscription worked successfully, you'll see it here and it will have a green check mark and say confirmed. And then we can return back to SES. To do that, go to the top and search for SES and go back to simple email. Click into your domain, click on notifications, scroll down, click on edit. Under bounce feedback, click the drop down and select the topic that we already created. Then do the same thing for complaint feedback, choose the topic that we've already created, and then click save changes. So just a reminder at this point, hopefully your verification now has a green check mark and you're ready to go. If not, wait just a little bit longer. But it's time now to go to our website to enter in our access and secret keys. So hopefully you kept those saved. Inside of Fluent SMTP, we need to set up a connection. So click add a connection and then select Amazon SES. Here we're going to enter our email from the domain name that we've already verified. So for us, this could be emails at convologydemo.com or if we went through the process of setting up a subdomain, our from name could be whatever we want. I'll put Convology. We're going to keep these two checkboxes checked and we're going to paste in our access key and our secret key and then choose the region where we set up our SES. For us, that was Northern California. And then click Save Connection Settings. Now there is one final thing that you have to do in order to use Amazon SES, despite everything that we just did. At this point, you're still in what Amazon calls the sandbox, which means you have not been approved to use Amazon SES. And you're going to have to apply to get out of the sandbox and be able to send more than just a handful of emails a day to just yourself. When you're ready to apply to get out of the sandbox, let's look at that last step that you need to do. Back in your account, in your account dashboard, you'll notice this message. Your SES account is in the sandbox for the region that you chose. In order to get out of the sandbox, you have to click Request Production Access. When you click on Request Production Access, you're given this form that you have to fill out. First, you need to choose what type of emails you're going to send from Amazon SES. Now, if you're using Fluent CRM or you're using other things from your website, that might be marketing. Or if you're just sending account credentials, and asset delivery and notifications, maybe from WooCommerce or Thrive Apprentice, those would be transactional. I recommend you choose transactional as the primary type of email that you're going to send. Because in the description, you're going to tell them that the primary reason that you're using Amazon SES is so that your WordPress website transactional emails are sent and delivered to your users. And then you're going to include an additional statement and say, however, I will also be sending additional follow-up emails that may be classified as marketing. I think that this step is crucial. You can't kind of skimp this part and you can't just say, give me access. You actually have to write a nice message and be very detailed about what you're going to do with Amazon SES. I've provided a template for this for members of Convology Pro that you can access inside of the community and you can just cut and paste and fill in the details for your business where they make sense. For everybody else, I highly recommend that you very clearly explain what you're doing, how you're handling bounces and complaints, whether that's through email verification with a dedicated email address 
or if it's using a bounce handler with Fluent CRM. Even if you write a perfect letter, even if you're in Convology Pro and use my template, Nine out of 10 times, you're going to get a reply back that says, please address these few questions. And you need to very clearly be able to articulate answers to those questions in order for them to get you out of the sandbox. Just a heads up, if you look spammy and you sound spammy, you're not going to get approved. But the good news is every client I've worked with and for every website I've used, every single one of them has been approved. Some of them require a few more questions than others, but ultimately all of them that have legitimate businesses and legitimate reasons for using Amazon SES do get approved. So you can see why a lot of people say that Amazon SES is a bit confusing. This whole process was quite involved, but on the other hand, you're paying 10 cents for a thousand emails and that's kind of a good deal. And if you're using Fluent CRM, you're not paying a monthly subscription based on the number of email addresses in your list. So. Weigh those pros and cons in your head, whether or not it's worth using Amazon SES, whether for transactional emails or for Fluent CRM. Only you can make that decision for yourself. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. If you have any questions, I'll try my best to answer them for you. Go ahead and leave a comment down below, and then I'll see you in the next video.